all over, and people were eating that since hundreds of years ago. What do you think about the other spots? Was that sarcasm? No, no. So that was In the 1980s, where you're going, to control the virus by breeding, classical breeding. He, he tried it all of them. We tried it for all of the world looking for resistance. We tried all of that and I would shake hands with a person who done it. And Hector Venezuela said that a uh, regular papaya was bred for resistance in Philippines. That's a garden. Well, you know what happened? That thing is just, I mean, I noticed that he spent a sabbatical leave in my lap. Rod, you spent a sabbatical leave. I encouraged him. I said, great. I clapped my head. Wonderful. At the same time, you said that there wasn't the human health studies done. And you agree that if you agree with that, we shouldn't be getting up alive. And you said no, 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 but that's what everybody's saying. You know, you need human health study on the genetically human combined because it had this process. Yeah. Oh, oh, that infected the papaya reach by natural they have eight times more protein. Okay, so you gotta have human health study on virus infected. But realistically, you can't do all that kind of stuff. There's so many crops that are infected with plant virus. I it's unrealistic to take human health study. Yes, absolutely. No, we're with a papaya, a natural papaya that's infected with the virus. Everybody been eating that for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. Okay? I don't so, eat an infected virus oh, papaya. That's the one I put on the side. I won't eat that. No, you know in the 1990s? I couldn't find it. You couldn't eat That doesn't mean I ate the one with the virus. And, and, and you, know, you know in citrus? In citrus? Millions of citrus in Brazil. They are inoculated with a mild strain of Tristeza virus to protect them. Mm. And that means all these orange millions of them are infected with the virus. And you know, everybody is. Everybody. So, the precautionary stuff, well, it's a virus. This stuff may cause harm. So you better not be drinking the orange juice. Because all the trees are infected with the Tristeza virus. So is there a potential for Good job, boycott GMOs. Eat organic. Boycott GMOs. Good job, Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. My name is uh, Derek Brewer. I'm with GMO Free Wyatt. Uh, we've been actively involved with this one. So the other islands do not get to like to make sure you get you know, full balance if you want. Uh, <laughs> What is what is your experience here uh, so far here? Uh, how do you uh, feel about what's going on here? Well, we have uh, you know a lot of concerns that have been addressed and we've been you know repeatedly bringing up our health concerns. And as you previously stated, there is a risk of uh, viral DNA damage and uh, concerns involving that. And so, just like you know, please accurately report what has uh, been stated here. Thank you. There was also the concern of the soil, how the soil was treated, but that's just the beginning. Like the way they introduce genetics into the papaya, it can alter the proteins of the gene. Like it can alter the proteins that the papaya has. If a, a, papaya, a papaya with viruses has eight times more protein, it doesn't mean that they're bad proteins. You know, the genetically modified papaya has proteins that are altered from a normal papaya. Different proteins. And one of Mr. Smith's points in the room was that the genetically modified papaya had certain proteins, certain proteins that were worse, you know, that actually affected humans. And that's what made them bad, and that's why genetics are genetically modified papaya. Comes down to our understanding, as you said, of the genetics. It's not the amount of protein in the papaya, or, you know, the amount of proteins, it's the types of proteins in the papaya. Well, when he said that the viral protein itself could be depressing our immune systems. And that's what I asked Dr. Chansal. virus? No, the protein of the, yeah, the ring spot. The virus, virus. The virus right? Okay. The viral protein can suppress our immune system. So I asked Dr. Gonzalez what he thought of that. And his answer was, 
well, the natural virus infects papayas, and people have been eating that, and there's more viral protein in the natural oh. papayas infected with the virus than there is in the protein produced by the gene that we oh, insert. To hear with, yeah. But the viral, the viral proteins can be, like, they're different proteins, right? So the ones that the infected papaya has might not be as harmful to humans as the proteins introduced by the genetic modification. Well, the genetic modification introduced harmful proteins. A genetic, that can a affect our one systems. viral protein. Oh, okay. But the introduction affects other genetics. It could, yes. Yeah, it can, so which can change the gene expression. The gene expression is, is the ability for genes to turn on or off. So each chromosome is made up of a large number of genes. So even though they have a small area that they're looking for effects on, these proteins can turn things on and off that are unexpected. Exactly. And that there is no way for us to confirm what that could be because of the, the way that genes work, that a number of factors can turn these things on and off. Right, but so, the natural virus could also turn genes on and off. But it happens slower than when it doesn't happen in the when, when, when you inject it in, that's a lot faster. And what occurs in nature, nature makes experiments, and gets rid of things that don't work, and keeps things that work. So when, when they speed it up like that, that's when we have to be more careful. We, have to, um, we don't have the, the additional uh, securities that occur in the natural environment. So have to check kept the balances our that would, if a certain thing is introduced, it would get taken out naturally. So you see things with like the corn, where you now have animals that are resistant to the, the DNA we're inserting in the first place. So for instance, with the corn, you have the rootworm that they're trying to protect from that is now actually immune to it by the transfer of that protein from the crop to the animal. And so even uh, the genetic that I disagree with. That doing. It's not the transfer to the animal itself. It's that animals evolve resistance to toxins, just like plants do. Natural selection. Natural selection. Some are resistant by chance. They survive and propagate. The others don't. It's not because of the transfer of a virus. New product will then cause the environment to change. And so yeah, if the I'm environment not is changing, that. it will. I'm just, I just wanted to ask Dr. Gonsalves what he thought about what Jeffrey Smith We'd just like to discuss it as well, that's all. We're just having you know, an open debate because that's what we're about here is having you know, the proper discourse and making sure that everyone is aware of everything. And so it's just uh, that's all we're trying to do here is make sure you know, the proper information is available. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. What was your name? Derek Brook. How do you spell it? D E R E K E R E W. I'm uh, 17. And who's in your organization? Uh, we have uh, several hundred members. Uh, uh, speak up and There's also uh, a network through several of the Y Islands that includes uh, Kauai and Molokai uh, as well as some of the islands that are experiencing uh, some concerns that we have. How much exactly? So there's just a few GM crops around here? Currently, that we are aware of, uh, GMO corn and papaya are two biggest crops. But there's How much corn? It's not that long. It's uh, over a thousand acres, which is sizable for the island here. And then we previously banned the genetic modification of the taro and the coffee, which uh, had come up uh, earlier on in the decade, uh, about 2005 and 2006 time period. And, uh, so we had previously banned uh, the modification of genetic organisms. Like Just on Hawaii Island? Correct. That's already it's already become a uh, law. And, and papaya, how many? Papaya is a large number of acres. Uh, I don't know exactly, but it's, uh, it's widespread. Is this the main island of Rome? So that's why, yeah, it's the biggest concern on our island is the particular crop. But it's not just this crop that we're working on, it's just that all these other crops that could be brought in and the experimentation, those are are even bigger concerns because, as you said, you don't have it research what's at least what you do that we're in. This is the real bias now in a certain way, but if they choose to genetically modify it again, we're bringing in a whole new uh, kit of the of possibilities that will be introduced. So that's why, you know, one of our biggest concerns is, is saying no more until, I think we don't all necessarily agree on the time frame, but until certain conditions are met that satisfies, you know, public concern as well as, uh, you know, the general uh, world's uh, concerns.
So, what do you think the vote's going to be? Well, I think that uh, we're going to vote for uh, GM3 White in the best way that we can. And, uh, you know, as my personal stance, I believe that you know, we haven't established enough safety on any of the jobs to be introduced. But uh, the council will do what it feels is the most uh, beneficial to the community. But that it definitely includes not allowing any future GMOs. In the so the bill up there was exemplify of it as it currently is. not the corn. Or any uh, future crops that could be here. It sounded like there were two, two, two council members who were against it, and two were four, and the others didn't say anything. So. <laughs> I think a lot of it Welcome to our words. world. <laughs> I mean, that was my reading. Yeah. Of the way the questions would go. Yeah. yeah, and I think some of it is still just is education on very complicated issues. Genetics and epigenetics is a, a very complicated science that, you know, takes a lot of time to be spent to understand. And that is one of the biggest problems is that we have to defer a lot of time to experts and people that have a greater understanding, but the people that have to make this decision are working with uh, you know, only a certain level of risk. And we have to take in uh, account of a much larger understanding of science than uh, is always taken into account by some of these individuals. Do you have a background in science? Uh, no, I do not. Uh, self-taught, self-educated. Uh, I've spent a good time as well talking with uh, Dr. Gonzalez there about the the way that technology is produced. And uh, as previously stated in there, there you know, are very different ways of doing a viral DNA, which is possibly risky, as it has been stated, is also very different than the introduction of pesticides and poisons or other future chemicals that can be added in the human crop. And those are very different and will have a whole different set of issues that we have to be addressed. Because we cannot blank it and say just because we believe or that this particular person says this crop is safe. That this particular crop is safe doesn't necessarily mean that another crop will be. And so we can't trust that everyone is always going to be looking for our interest. It brought to the attention that the FDA and other environmental protection agencies aren't doing the particular studies that we truly need as a citizen. And the affected population. Now, did they try to prohibit preempt local regu regulations? Uh, we've had issues with that before um, at the state level. Uh, Margaret Willey, in particular, had to go to Super Walk the attempts of taking our local authority over some issues. So we're very, uh, very lucky to have the ability to do this at our local level. So that's where, uh, where we stand, and I believe we have a large amount of population that's behind this. We've done several rallies and several... Uh, how do you know that this is a large percentage? I don't doubt you, but how do you We had over a thousand written testimonies, which is the largest amount that I believe that council's ever had for before. Uh, speaking on behalf of Bill 79, which is the predecessor for the current bills that are in front of the council, we had an additional round of testimony on top of that, where several hundred uh, additional testimonies were given by both speakers and written. Uh, so we have over a total of roughly 2,000 uh, individual testimonies between our written and spoken testimonies from uh, three different uh, testimony dates. So uh, that's a huge chunk of the population here, and given a normal county meeting, you would never see anything like that. So that's how I can say these things. Okay, I'm Do you have a contact or email? Uh, yeah, I can, be, uh, I can be personally reached at uh, April.